Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare. The Merchant of Venice is an adaptation from Shakespeare's play, The Merchant of Venice. It depicts the beautiful relationship of friendship where one is ready to sacrifice life for the sake of other. Antonio was a rich and prosperous merchant of Venice. His ships were on nearly every sea and he traded with Portugal, Mexico, England and India. Although proud of his status, he was generous and delighted in using his wealth to relieve the needs of his friends, among whom Bassanio held the first place. Bassanio, like many other gay and gallant gentlemen of his time, was reckless and extravagant. On finding that he had exhausted his fortune and was unable to pay his creditors, he went to Antonio for help. To you, Antonio, he said, I owe the most in money and in love. I have thought of a plan to pay everything I owe if you will but help me. Say what I can do and it shall be done, answered his friend. Then said Bassanio, in Belmont is a richly left lady and from all quarters of the globe renowned suitors come to woo her, not only because she is rich, but also because she is beautiful and good. She looked on me with such favour when last we met, that I feel sure that I should be able to win her away from all her rivals, for her love had I, but the means to go to Belmont where she lives. All my fortunes, said Antonio, are at sea, and so I have no ready money. But luckily, my credit is good in Venice, and I will borrow for you what you need. Credit means reputation here, especially as a financially stable person. There was living in Venice at this time a rich moneylender named Shylock. Antonio despised and disliked this man very much and treated him with the greatest harshness and scorn. Shylock submitted to all these indignities with a patient shrug, but deep in his heart he cherished a desire for revenge on the rich smug. Smug means self-contented, holier than thou. Merchant, because Antonio both hurt his pride and injured his business. But for him, thought Shylock, I should be richer by half a million ducats. Ducats are gold coins used as currency in Venice in those days. On the marketplace and wherever he can, he denounces the rate of interest I charge and, worse than that, he lends out money freely. So, when Bassanio came to him to ask for a loan of 3,000 ducats to Antonio for three months, Shylock hid his hatred and, turning to Antonio, said, Harshly as you have treated me, I would be friends with you and have your love. So, I will lend you the money and charge you no interest. But, just for fun, you shall sign a bond in which it shall be agreed that if you do not repay me in three months' time, then I shall have the right to a pound of your flesh to be cut from what part of your body I choose. No, cried Bassanio to his friend. You shall run no such risk for me. Why, fear not, said Antonio. My ships will be home a month before the time. I will sign the bond. Thus, Bassanio was furnished with the means to go to Belmont, there to woo the lovely Portia. The very night he started, the moneylender's pretty daughter, Jessica, ran away from her father's house with her lover. 
and she took with her from her father's hoard some bags of ducats and precious stones. Shylock's grief and anger were terrible to see. His love for his daughter changed to hate. I would, in Old English, would is often used to mean wish. She were dead at my feet and the jewels in her ear. He cried. This means that Shylock wishes that his daughter, Jessica, who had run away with her lover, should be dead and lying at his feet. The jewels she stole should be on her person, so he could get them back. It shows that Shylock cares more for his wealth than his daughter. His only comfort now was in hearing of the serious losses which had befallen Antonio, as it was being said that some of his ships were wrecked. Let him look to his bond, said Shylock. Let him look to his bond. Meanwhile, Bassanio had reached Belmont and had visited the fair Portia. He found that, as he had told Antonio, the rumour of her wealth and beauty had drawn to her suitors from far and near. But to all of them, Portia had but one reply. She would only accept that suitor who would pledge himself to abide by the terms of her father's will. These were conditions that frightened away many an ardent wooer. Ardent means having or showing very strong feelings. For he who would win Portia's heart and hand had to guess which of the three caskets held her portrait. If he guessed right, then Portia would be his bride. If wrong, then he was bound by oath never to reveal which casket he chose, never to marry and to go away at once. The caskets were of gold, silver and lead. The gold one bore this inscription. Who chooseth me shall gain what many men desire. The silver one had this. Who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves. While on the lead one were these words. Who chooseth me must give and hazard all he hath. The Prince of Morocco, as brave as he was black, was among the first to submit to this test. He chose the gold casket, for he said, neither base lead nor silver could contain her picture. He found inside the gold casket the likeness of what many men desire. Death in the form of a skull with a scroll inserted within its empty eye. He read the message written on the scroll, All that glitters is not gold. Gilded tombs do worms enfold. This means that all that shines is not gold. Tombs or graves that have a golden cover may contain worms from rotting dead bodies. Defeated and grieving, he made a hasty exit. After him came the haughty prince of Aragon and saying, Let me have what I deserve. Surely I deserve the lady. Thus he chose the silver one and found inside it a fool's head. Did I deserve no more than a fool's head? he cried. Then at last came Bassanio and Portia would have delayed him from making his choice from very fear of his choosing wrong for she loved him dearly even as he loved her. But, said Bassanio, let me choose at once for, as I am, I live upon the rack. Upon the rack means 
under great stress. Here, we can see how loyal Portia is to her father, even though he is dead. She could have ignored her father's will and told Bassanio which casket to choose, but she doesn't. Thus, Bassanio undergoes the same test as others. Portia bade her servants to bring music and play it while her gallant lover made his choice. And Bassanio took the oath and walked up to the caskets, the musicians playing softly all the while. Mere outward show, he said, is to be despised. The world is still deceived with ornament, and so no gaudy gold or shining silver for me. I choose the lead casket. Joy be the consequence. And opening it, he found fair Portia's portrait inside. And he turned to her and asked if it were true that she was his. Yes, said Portia, I am yours, and this house is yours. And with them I give you this ring, from which you must never part. And Bassanio, saying that he could hardly speak for joy, found words to swear that he would never part with the ring while he lived. Then, suddenly, all his happiness was dashed with sorrow, for messengers came from Venice to tell him that Antonio was ruined, and that Shylock demanded from the Duke of Venice the fulfilment of the bond, under which he was entitled to a pound of the merchant's flesh. Portia was as grieved as Bassanio to hear of the danger which threatened his friend. First, she said, Take me to church and make me your wife, and then go to Venice at once to help your friend. You shall take with you the money enough to pay his debt twenty times over. But when her newly made husband had gone, Portia left soon after and arrived in Venice disguised as a lawyer, along with an introduction from a celebrated lawyer, Bellerio. The Duke of Venice had called Bellerio to decide the legal questions raised by Shylock's claim to a pound of Antonio's flesh. Portia, who was related to the lawyer, had managed to convince him to send her in his place to the Duke's court as the legal adviser. When the court met, Bassanio offered Shylock twice the money borrowed if he would withdraw his claim. But the money lender's only answer was, If every ducat in six thousand ducats were in six parts and every part a ducat, I would not draw them. I would have my bond. It was then that Portia arrived in her disguise, and not even her own husband knew her. The Duke gave her welcome on account of the great Bellario's introduction, and left the settlement of the case to her. Then, in noble words, she bade Shylock to have mercy. But he was deaf to her entreaties. I will have the pound of flesh, was his reply. What have you to say? asked Portia of the merchant. But little, he answered. I am armed and well prepared. Antonio is prepared to give his pound of flesh as per the bond. The court awards you a pound of Antonio's flesh, said Portia to the moneylender. Most righteous judge, cried Shylock. A sentence, come, prepare. Shylock is in great hurry to get his revenge, so he tells the judge to deliver the sentence, the judgment against Antonio, who should prepare to have his flesh cut according to the bond. Tarry a little. This bond gives you no right to Antonio's blood. 
only to his flesh. If you spill a drop of his blood, all your property will be forfeited. Forfeited means handed over to the state. Such is the law. And Shylock, in his fear, said, Then I will take Bassanio's offer. No, said Portia sternly. You shall have nothing but your bond. Take your pound of flesh, but remember that if you take more or less, even by the weight of a hair, you will lose your property and your life. Shylock now grew very much frightened. Give me my three thousand ducats that I lent him and let him go. Bassanio would have paid it to him, but, said Portia, no, he shall have nothing but his bond. You, a foreigner, she added, have sought to take the life of a Venetian citizen, and thus, by the Venetian law, your life and goods are forfeited. Down. Down means on your knees. Therefore, and beg mercy of the Duke. Thus were the tables turned. Tables turned means position of disadvantage was changed to advantage. And no mercy would have been shown to Shylock had it not been for Antonio who was willing to forgive him. The moneylender had to forfeit half his fortune to the state and had to settle the other half on his daughter's husband and with this, he had to be content. Bassanio, in his gratitude to the clever lawyer, was induced to part with the ring his wife had given him, and with which he had promised never to part. And when on his return to Belmont, he confessed as much to Portia. She seemed very angry and vowed she would not be friends with him until she had her ring again. But at last she told him that it was she who in the disguise of the lawyer had saved his friend's life and got the ring from him. So Bassanio was forgiven and made happier than ever to know how rich a prize he had drawn in the lottery of the caskets. Bassanio had not just got a beautiful wife in Portia, but also an intelligent woman, who, by her clever interpretation of the terms of the bond, saved Antonio's life.